Let's officially start this. So hi, everyone, and welcome to our Meet the Platform webinar with Google Play. I firstly like to acknowledge the country on which we meet today. Today, I come from you from the land of the Kombumeri people and um, who are part of the Ugamba language region. And I invite you to think on whose land you are residing on from your location. Serenity was never ceded, and the lands always have and always will be Aboriginal land. I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging and extend my welcome to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. So welcome. For those who don't know me, my name is Jens, and I'm IGA's Director of Industry and Member Relations. IGA is the peak industry body of the video games industry here in Australia. And today, our friends at Google Play are going to bring you up to speed on the ever-changing mobile gaming landscape by giving you the knowledge and tools to enhance your game's performance on their platform. So we'll be looking into such things as mobile gaming trends, what's new on Google Play, policy compliance, but I get that right, as well as launch best practices. So please welcome from Google Play, Den, Phantom Sinchai, and Mount Choi. And as usual, you'll also get a chance to ask some questions. Now, how is that going to work? You see at the bottom there of Zoom, hopefully, the Q&A function. So I would like you to please ask any questions via that function. The reason why is because it allows us to track your questions and we can mark them as answered. So the chat function, which we have as well, doesn't allow that. So please use the Q&A function. Pretty straightforward. So if there's anything that you want to know that you want to explore in further depth, please use the Q&A function. Um, and uh, well, look, that's pretty much it for me. So Dan and Moon, thank you so much for making yourself available and uh, over to you. Great. Thanks, Jens. And hi, everybody. So great to meet you today. Uh, as Jens mentioned, today we'll be talking about, you know, everything great about Google Play as we are introducing our platform to you in the Meet the Play webinar, our Meet the Platform webinar. So let me go to the next slide. So yeah, as Jens mentioned, my name is Dan Pandup Sinchai. I'm a strategic partnership manager at Google Play. I'll be your host today. Also joined by Moon here, who's a trust and safety analyst for Google Play. And we do have quite a packed agenda. So for the next hour, we're going to share what we're so excited about in the mobile opportunity, latest news and updates on Google Play, policy updates, and then get into some launch best practices. And there'll be the Q&A at the end. So first, let's just get started with uh, why we're so excited about gaming and the opportunity in mobile ahead? Well, to start, after two years of contraction on the games market, last year we saw gaming return to growth in 2023. The number of players grew to an astounding 3.5 billion worldwide, which is a 6% increase year over year, and of which 1.5 billion, or over 40% of them, were also paying users. And while consoles led the way in growth, mobile also saw an uptick and remains the majority share of total gaming revenue. And we can say that today, mobile accounts for nearly 50% of total gaming revenue uh, across the board. So some really healthy numbers after um, you know, some tough years on the market. And when we look at absolute share of IAP revenue, mobile is far and away the largest of all genres of apps. Uh, users are and want to spend on games, and there's a huge opportunity here. The globally, 60% of all mobile IAP revenue comes from gaming alone. And a large part of this IAP share is being driven by broader shifts towards hybrid monetization, especially in hyper-casual games, which combine the best of ads monetization as well as in-app purchases. So what we've seen lately is that diversifying has become especially critical given the uncertain global economic environment and lower CPMs in the market. This year, IAP revenue among hyper-casual games grew by a staggering 35% year over year. Meanwhile, in mid-core games, we've seen team battlers like Honkai Star Rail, Nikkei, and MOBA games posting strong growth uh, from 9 to 13%. Meanwhile, simulation sports games grew an incredible 108% year over year, driven by some strong entries into the market. But perhaps most impressive of all has been the casual genre, which grew an incredible 9% year over year to just over $11 billion. And part of that growth was driven by these three categories. So there is a 20% surge in match three games, the usual suspects there. Uh, but more incredibly, it 
8x rise in party royale games such as Stumble Guys and 35x rise in survival arena games with games like Survival IO. So what we've seen across the genres is, is that strong growth points to an increasingly innovative and complex landscape and naturally one that is increasingly competitive for studios. So within this environment, we want to bring to you the best tools and uh, insights possible through Google Play. Uh, so that's why we're gonna, the next section we wanna talk about how we want to help supercharge your community of players on Google Play through our newest tools and features. And we truly believe that Google Play is becoming the best destination for gaming. And this vision is only possible with the incredible games that you bring to play, which is why we're investing tools to help empower you to achieve more for your games across three different areas. The first being increasing user engagement, the second being accelerating your business growth, and the third being maximizing your reach, all through your partnership with Google Play. So we'll go through some product updates and news about these three pillars. So again, we want Play to be the ultimate home for gaming, focusing on three areas. So the first is that we want to build an engaging experience for gamers from pre-launch to post-install, becoming a companion for discovering new games and never missing an update from games that they love. We want to reward gamers for engaging with their favorite games with cool milestones, exclusive items, and perks, offering more opportunities to grow deeper connections with your gaming universe. And here are just some of the examples of how we're going to be doing that. We'll go into more in detail in a bit later. Uh, and lastly, we, we want to provide a seamless experience across devices. As gamers use many screens, not just mobile, we want to make sure that they can play their favorite games, your games, wherever they are. So let's go over these three pillars in more detail. So I mentioned the first one being increasing user engagement. So I wanted to talk about play game services. Currently it's being used to serve over 550 million monthly active gamers, making sure that their game progress is saved and able to be carried across devices and profiles. With play game services, gamers can easily save their game progress and earn achievements. And gamers who switch between devices can easily jump back into gameplay instantly on any device. And we've heard your feedback on how we can improve our offering, and we've made big changes to make it easier for you to integrate and provide an even more frictionless experience for users. Play Game Services now supports authentication with first and third party identity systems. So users can now sign in with any provider you choose to offer without changing the existing sign in flows. And you don't need to store the association between in game accounts and Play Game Service profiles yourself, meaning no database changes are required and users can automatically sync their process without setting up a Google Play Games profile, ensuring their progress is synced and whenever they change to a new device. So one example of the capability is Quest, which enables you to keep users engaged by setting up challenges within your game. Our early access partners have not only seen an uplift in active players, but also an increase in buyer conversions and revenue as well. And this year we'll be rolling out Quest to more titles. So to unlock all these great features, it's important to ensure that you've integrated with Play Game Services. So please check this link for details and stay tuned for more capabilities soon powered by Play Game Services. We've also been working to tailor our store experience to better engage with users who already installed your game. We're rolling out enhancements to store listings to more prominently display your game updates, new contents, and promotions. Users will be able to see your latest YouTube videos and FAQs generated by AI and more. These YouTube videos are also shown on the Games tab to users who have recently played your game. So just giving you more places to um, show the best of your game to different users across the platform. From our early experiments, we've seen an uplift in both installs and reinstalls and opens for participating titles. So please visit this link if you're interested in being among the first to get access to this new feature. 
Um, and if you need to get any of these links at the end, we can always flash them again. So let me just keep going through the presentation. <clears throat> Next, let's talk about how Play is investing in programs to accelerate your business growth. With over 220 million members, Google Play Points is one of the largest loyalty programs in the world. Play Points is available in over 35 different markets, helping you to retain your users and enabling you to directly reach new purchase-ready users and active spenders. And this year, we're excited to announce that we'll be expanding Play Points to our users in Brazil, which is a huge market for a lot of your games. For participating developers, you can add and manage discounts and offers directly through the Play Console. What you add in Play Console is also made available in Play Points, where members regularly visit to redeem points for rewards. Play Points now offers the capability to set limited quantities for exclusive in-game offers, building excitement and hype around limited deals. And we found that these offers have been highly effective at reaching paying users and driving repeat purchases. Then moving on to Play Pass, which already has a fantastic catalog of over 1,000 premium ad-free titles, helps you reach new paying users with over 120% year-over-year growth in total prescription, uh, subscriptions. And I'm excited to share that Play Pass is expanding to include in-game offers from popular games, all without limiting your potential average revenue per user. In-game offers on Play Pass will be available in 21 markets, including Japan, and will be launching in Korea for the first time this year. Through our pilots, Play Pass has attracted up to a 12% increase in new buyers for participating in games, and the majority of users spend more than the offer amount provided by Play Pass. Some of the world's largest mobile games are using Play Pass to reach and engage with new buyers. Working together, we've made Play Pass a great experience for gamers while offering developers a new reoccurring revenue stream and buyer generation opportunity. So to learn more and express interest in these programs, please visit the link shown here. And then lastly, let's talk about maximizing the reach of your games. So we're investing in two areas here, multi-platform gaming, as well as helping to scale your game technically across the Android fleet. So regarding multi-platform gaming, over the last year, we partnered with some of the most popular mobile games, including Clash of Clans, Garena Free Fire, and Cookie Run Kingdom to increase user reach on mobile, tablet, tablet, Chromebooks, and Windows PC. As of today, Google Play Games on PC has grown to include over 3,000 titles available in over 140 countries, with onboarded developers seeing up to 30% increase in new users and 35% uplift in playtime. And now we're introducing more features to help power your cross-platform growth. So this year, we're excited to add support for native PC game publishing. If you're writing a native PC game and are looking to expand to a global audience of gamers, we want to hear from you. So you can check out this link here on the screen for more details. We're also making user acquisition easier and more powerful for PC games. We've been working closely with measurement partners like Adjust and Apps Flyer to integrate the Play, Install, Refer API. You can easily use the Refer API to achieve closed loop marketing on PC, which enables you to optimize marketing channels across ad networks, social, and other channels. Now I'll pass it over to Moon to speak to you about Play policy updates. Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Moon. Um, I'm I work for a Trust and Safety uh, for Google Play and Android, uh, and I'm, I'm also based out of the Singapore office. And yeah, I've got, I think, 15 minutes right then um, to talk through some of the policy um, and uh, updates and also some of the best practices and what, what we do as a team. Um, so yeah, let's run through this really quickly. Next slide, please. So first, intro and um, some of our team principles. Next slide, please. First of all, our mission. Uh, I'm not going to just you know repeat this, but uh, our team is basically um, developing policies and and actually execute them uh, by launching up uh, launching uh, right processes and setting up right teams to review 
uh, your applications uh, and games. And also we do handle all this appeal flows um, in a way that uh, we do uh, talk to you guys in, uh, for for instances whenever you guys have any questions uh, or are, are we could have made a mistake on our decisions um, to to help you better experience uh, our um, um, products on on from policy point of view. Next slide. And yeah, we're making our store uh, not just on the mobile uh, Google Play Store, but overall uh, Google uh, mobile ecosystem products. Uh, in a, and, in, and our main mission is to um, uh, build a safe and trustworthy store for uh, every users and also um, for for you guys, like developers. Um, so we're also working on uh, TVs, autos, and wares, um, and even daydreams, ARs, and VRs these days. Uh, so we are working on vast a majority of uh, the this ad, uh, mobile uh, ecosystem in a way. Next slide. And I would like to share uh, these three key principles of how we design our policies and how we execute them. So first, um, as I said, our mission is to protect users uh, and you guys, developers, to by making our store most trustworthy and safe platform in the world. Um, first, our policies continue to evolve. Second, um, policy violations may result in enforcement actions. And last but not least, every app is thoroughly reviewed uh, before it goes live. So if I may just talk about the very uh, one each, uh, very first one, policies continue to evolve. So this is an area that a lot of developers find it very difficult to uh, catch up with the, the, all the changes that we're making um, um, throughout the year. Um, but we're in a very fast paced moving um, industry and we're doing our best to make sure we have the right policy um, to, to make sure we 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 curate our uh, store uh, in a safe safe manner, and uh, we do appreciate uh, a lot to you guys, developers, to cooperate with all these changes and and cope with it. To be honest, uh, but we're and we're at the same time we are doing our best to um, communicate this in a way in advance of time and give you ample amount of time to work on the fixes and changes to comply with our uh, updated policies. And second. Yes, uh, sometimes uh, it may result in uh, enforcement action, but it's not the end of the world um, because we're trying to give you uh, more chances uh, by giving you warnings um, and instead of uh, direct enforcement on your apps and games on the store. So we can, we can get into that more uh, in detail later. And lastly, uh, every app is thoroughly reviewed before it goes live, uh, meaning that it's not just a uh, machines that's taking the actions on uh, on your apps and games. We do rely on, uh, of course, machines uh, and, and uh, AIs to to detect some of the uh, threats and harms. However, we do uh, in in all the cases, hundred percent, we do have humans involved whenever we um, take the final action on on certain applications. So that's a common myth uh, and misinformation that we have out there in the uh, market. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, next slide, please. And yes, we do use manual and automated process, as I said. Um, and um, we there are these bad actors keep uh, coming up with uh, innovative ways to bypass and, and circumvent our uh, detection mechanism. So we do have uh, many uh, uh, this analysts and also um, the engineers to detect. Uh, and identify what are the threats on the uh, on the market, the latest ones, and and we do work on on these cleanups. We so we call the uh, sweeps, um, and we try to automate this as much as we can in order to um, reach the efficiency and also at the same time uh, keep the store as clean as possible. Given we have like millions of uh, applications on the store global wide, with uh, um, you know, thousands of uh, app updates, uh, submissions that we get on a daily basis. Uh, so next slide. And this is the, uh, as you know, the the basically the where, where source of truth of all, where we put all the uh, policies uh, of our product. Uh, I'm not gonna go every single detail of this, but next slide. 
But I wanted to just highlight three things here is that um, our priorities um, has been has always been for past two, three years, privacy, security and families. And this will be is our priority this year and should be the next year as well. So especially on the privacy and security where uh, we're seeing more uh, industry uh, and, and uh, is, is shifting towards um, um, more user data, um, safety um, side of the, the practices. So uh, we will be limiting more uh, usage of these sensitive permissions more and more. So we do have more policy updates coming in this year. And also usage, limiting the usage of uh, a lot of these third party SDKs that are also not uh, complying with our, uh, our privacy uh, user data uh, policies. So those, that's the, the top priority that we've been working on. And second, security. Yes, uh, there are a lot of developers who are injecting all this um, um, malicious codes inside their apps. And we've been um, also investing heavily on this area to uh, detect uh, those uh, violations and harms on code level. So for example, uh, this all this malware uh, policies around uh, tall frauds, like click frauds, are some of the top tactics that developers uh, have been um, violating um, on our store. And, and we really want to um, uh, ban those uh, out of our uh, ecosystem. Um, and last but not least, families. And we will be putting more more restrictions on, uh, on usage of the uh, ads and, and also some of these... Um, uh, sexual contents and, 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 and so on in the families uh, apps. So for those of you who are uh, also targeting kids, uh, this is, these are the areas that uh, you will uh, need to keep, uh, keep an eye on uh, for any policy updates uh, this year and also next year. Next slide, please. Yeah, and talking about the policy updates, these so we will have three updates uh, every year. Uh, so this is more of a um, cycle uh, of policy updates uh, over overview. So we just announced our first one this year in uh, last week uh, in April, early April, and we'll be announcing second one in mo more or less uh, in July and the last one in, in October or November ish. So for any updates, uh, we will we call it bundle and it consists of uh, at least 10, uh, 7 to 8, or even up to 10 to 12 uh, policy updates, clarifications, right? Um, but not every policy in, in that bundle may impact you. So we will send out a notification email and also gamma, uh, sorry, a notification email and also what we call this policy bias video, which captures the highlight of each policy bundle. So please make sure you tune into, I'll give you the link later in the slides. Uh, make sure you tune into the um, our, our notifications and and also I'll be hosting regional webinars uh, for Australia and Southeast Asia region uh, to make sure that you guys have a chance to ask us questions directly if some of the policies are impacting you and, and before making any uh, decisions you can ask us questions directly during the uh, webinar um, and yeah hopefully this gives you an overview of um, the cycle of uh, how frequently we do update our policies. Yep, next slide, next slide, please. Yeah, and then I can talk about a little bit of, uh, I can really uh, fly through the, the best practices and helpful resources for your future references. Next slide. Yeah, first, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about these different types of enforcements, but this is this will take a lot of, a lot of time, but I wanted to focus on this in the middle, the warning part. Um, so, in the warning, uh, so I'm not sure if uh, if every one of you have experienced this, but if not, uh, we are moving towards more of a sending out warning instead of direct enforcement, which would then be in the red area to block and suspension. So instead of you know blocking your app and suspending your app, um, we would uh, try our best to send you a warning um, so that you can uh, work on the fixes because. Um, many times, many developers just make this um, violations um, without knowing that certain policies even existed or made, they made it with, by mistakes, right? So please stay tuned uh, with our notifications, enforcement uh, notifications, or 
in console inbox message uh, because even warnings uh, we will show up these uh, warning messages and but and there will be a grace period so that um, you can uh, you, you, you and of course yeah you will need to fix it by the deadline but in case if you need more time of course we were uh, we are here to give you an extended deadline so please uh, utilize the appeals process to do so as well next slide And planning for app review. So here, are key words is that um, lead time official SLA is seven days, and a lot of developers have been exper already experiencing longer uh, review times these days. Uh, and you should always keep uh, the seven days as uh, your publishing um, journey, um, so that you don't uh, get stuck with the uh, launch campaigns when the app is still in review, basically. So, but in, in most of the times, the review won't take up to seven days, but sometimes it does, right? So uh, please make sure that you uh, have seven days of lead time. Next slide, next slide, please. And internal testing track, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but since about uh, last year, uh, we started not reviewing internal closed testing tracks. So in case if you need uh, to test us a new version, something really quickly, just internally, then you sh uh, should uh, utilize this. Next slide. Manage publishing, of course, this is a very uh, important feature. Uh, if you wanna uh, uh, have a certain date of uh, launch, for example, 10 days from now, you can submit an advance and get the re app review done and use manage publishing to keep it uh, still under the testing track or unpublished and then on the launch date, uh, you can just push it to the uh, production so that you can meet the deadline uh, launch date uh, without any hassle. So highly recommend to use this feature if you haven't. Next slide. Filing an appeal. Uh, of course, this can take a lot long a longer time to uh, for you to uh, solve the policy issues, but this is the main channel that you should always utilize whenever you have policy questions clarifications to make. Next slide, please. Uh, and of course, uh, please update your contact emails uh, and I'll do check your inboxes frequently so that you don't miss out any of these notifications. Next slide. And if you have any legal con uh, reasons uh, for to, to, to report any of the, for example, any impersonating apps or copycat apps, uh, games uh, that you think your um, intellectual property is being stolen, just use this link uh, to file a case to us. Next slide. And also you can also uh, flag inappropriate apps uh, that you think is in violation of our uh, policy. Uh, just use this link to report. Next slide. And also reviews. Uh, you can also re uh, report us inappropriate re user reviews and ratings. Uh, by uh, following these uh, uh, steps. Next slide. And this is a really useful link for you to read through uh, all the different policy deadlines. So I know for each bundle, we have, let's say, 10 different policies, but each one might have a different policy uh, a grace period or what's what we call enforcement start date. So this is a good timeline view for you to check out uh, when um, when we are starting a certain policy in enforcement. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, this is a free uh, course for you to take uh, for, uh, uh, it's called Play Academy. Uh, it has a lot of good uh, course, free courses for you to uh, learn more about play policies uh, and, and, and how to use the play products uh, and console better. Next slide. And this is the link that you can get a, uh, an update on policy bytes. Uh, so we, we do have our latest one uh, about the, the last week's policy bundle update. So please go and check it out. Next slide. Yeah, and as I said, uh, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand region, I'll be running a webinar, um, which is set for April 18th. So please uh, use this link uh, to, to, to sign up. And, and if you have any questions, um, you can ask me questions directly. And next, next slide, please.
And these are the helpful resources, uh, links that you can take a look. Yeah, I think that's it from me. Great, thanks, Moon. So yes, a lot of different links, um, you know, which you can check out for Google Play Policy. Again, it's very, very important that we keep our platform safe uh, for both developers and users. So definitely an area of investment for us uh, and will be one that we'll be keeping a close eye on uh, moving forward. So I think that brings us to our last presentation section of the day. So we wanted to go over how to successfully launch games on Google Play. So first we talked about the opportunity. We talked about um, you know, the newest, the newest uh, tools and features on Google Play. We talked about policy compliance. Uh, but then how does one actually go about launching a game successfully on Google Play? As we know, you know launching games in this highly competitive market uh, has become tougher. We know there's overall higher development costs and there's higher user acquisition costs as well. So to seize this opportunity at game launch, which is you know your most important kind of milestone for, for your game releases, uh, it's important to launch with the best possible footing and help you get best started on this mobile journey. I wanted to spend a little bit of time sharing our secrets behind the great game launch and how we think about this at Google Play every day when we work at developers across the world to want to launch their next game. So we'll then dive into this. So when we think about a great launch at Google, we think about it in five unique pre-launch steps. So these are one, internal testing, two, closed beta, three, open beta, four, soft launch, and five, pre-registration. So each step serves a unique purpose and is an essential part of ensuring the best possible launch for your game. And there are various ways and tools that we've developed over the years to help you nail each step of the process. So the first step, which you might be familiar with, is internal testing. We know with testing, speed is everything. You need to ideate fast, roll out new builds quickly, and measure results accurately. So over the years, we've built out the Play Console to help you quickly roll out private APKs to your friends, family, and staff to test your ideas early. Uh, you know, test those MVPs and ideate in seconds. We also know that you need to measure stability and performance results quickly and accurately. And you need to be able to push experimental builds across a wide range of devices, including mobile, tablet, tablet, and even TV. You can do all this with just a few simple clicks via the Play Console. So once you've done the internal testing and you've gotten something that you're happy with, you want to bring it to market in the next step, uh, then the next step would be to run a closed beta test with a small public group and community of players, especially your most loyal fans. The Play Console lets you achieve this with the closed beta feature. So in closed beta, you're being you know, in full control of distribution, which is critical at this stage, which is why we've rolled out extensive options to help you manage your testing group sizes to test optimally for what you're looking for. So the first point is that you can control the number of groups to invite via email and help also organize play tests across your company or private external testers uh, up to a limit of 100,000 users, or an unlimited number via Google Groups. So after you've done your internal testing, now you've done your closed testing, and you've gained enough confidence and refined your build, the next step is to launch an open beta. So this step is especially critical because it represents the first time that your game is seen by the, you know, quote-unquote, outside world. These are people who are not curated by you in the same way as your friends or your families or your loyal fans. Um, and sometimes we refer to open beta as early access on Google Play. And it's a great way for you to distribute and test your game publicly and reach a whole new group of users who will eventually become uh, you know, your future players when you go uh, in your full launch. So the great thing about open beta is that you can launch to this uh, early testing group of users without having to worry about reviews or ratings impacting the visibility of your game. And you can also control the distribution with audience caps in the console. So this is really a time where you can get feedback, uh, which is, you know, feedback from live real players who are you know, outside of your friends and family group, but then also you don't need to worry about the long-term ramifications of the reviews or ratings affecting your game negatively down the road. It's really for you to gather all this feedback and then go back and iterate and then improve the game before the full launch. 
So during the open beta phase, we focus, we recommend that you focus on testing early metrics, such as retention, user engagement, your game economy, and also server load testing. Uh, and aside from technical benefits, it also allows you to test new markets and build up a community pre-launch. I think, uh, you know, we've seen plenty of games that have amazing gameplay, amazing features, they launch, uh, and then their servers crash because their, their game can't handle the load or things like that. So really recommend using the open beta phase to help load test all that and make sure that everything is running uh, in a way that's smooth before going to full global distribution. So we have a case study about open beta with uh, next game, Stranger Things. So while working on their Stranger Things games in collaboration with Netflix, uh, Next Game successfully tested and optimized their retention mechanics ahead of launch using open beta. This helped them to refine their retention prediction models and improve their long-term retention before going with their full launch. So what's after open beta? Once you're confident about the build, the next step is to soft launch your game to truly test your organic performance and monetization flows in secondary markets. So soft launches are often skipped over due to the tight launch timelines or studios just not seeing the need for it. But we do think it's a vital part of the process and helps lower the overall risk of the launch for a number of reasons. First, it lets you test the full user acquisition flow for your game, both paid and organic user acquisition, helping you optimize your UA strategy while providing feedback on your overall store presence and how well your store assets are driving conversion for your game. Second, it lets you test localization of your game, how well different markets and cultures respond to your game, and how well your monetization flows in your game, whether it be ads or IAP, uh, and then seeing which one drives higher buyer conversion. And third, it helps you build up a ratings buffer prior to launch to build credibility, help you generate traction ahead of your global release. So you can soft launch on some markets while at the same time keeping some markets in open beta and even pre-registration. So the Google Play Console is very flexible in allowing you to choose which markets you want to keep uh, the game in different stages in. So what we often see from developers is that they will have a, you know, a key market, which they're targeting. Let's say it's the US, which is common for a lot of you know, developers in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, they will do a soft launch in not the US, but they'll do a soft launch in markets that have similar types of users uh, to kind of get a sneak peek on how the game will perform once they go to that larger target market. So you know, some common Soft launch markets for the US include Australia and New Zealand. There are also some Nordic countries, um, European markets, things like that, where the audience profile, user profile is still quite similar to the US, um, but they're not taking the full risk of launching their game right off the bat uh, in their largest, you know, most promising market. Um, so definitely recommend soft launch as a way to kind of hedge the risk. Because again, we, we realize that the launch time period is the most important one that can either make or break games. So taking a measured approach to it and really being thoughtful about how you roll out your game uh, is something that we highly recommend on Google Play. Uh, and then the last step to a successful launch uh, that we recommend for developers is pre-registration. So before pushing your game out the door, it's important to maximize launch momentum by building anticipation and hype around your game in key markets. And the best way to do that is through pre-registration or pre-reg for short. So what pre-reg does, it helps you drive quality users on day one by allowing you to build a base of followers. So users can pre-register for your game and upon launch, your game is automatically downloaded to their devices, ensuring a strong day one launch. If you're running paid campaigns, you can point them to your pre-registration page to build hype and maximize launch velocity. Meanwhile, organic user acquisition, whether in the Play Store or on social media and word of mouth can also be channeled to your pre-registration page. You can even offer a pre-registration reward such as in-game currency or unique items to entice users to sign up, reward and engage loyal users and broaden your fan base. Developers who run pre-registration campaigns often see a large increase in day one and day seven retention and very strong launch performance. So the way to think about this is as I mentioned, if you are targeting you know, different countries for a global launch, you might do a soft launch. Again, let's take the example of your main target is, is the US and you soft launch in Australia to gather metrics and data. 
uh, then you can start a pre-registration campaign in the U.S. market to help build momentum and kind of drive those users uh, with all of your different marketing campaigns, again, via whether it's paid or if it's organic, word of mouth, influencer, whatever it is, right? You just want to start building that momentum towards the launch day while keeping an eye on your soft launch metrics, ensuring that your main market, which you're doing pre-registration is, uh, will have the best chance to succeed off the bat. So one case study that we have for pre-registration is Riot Games, League of Legends, Wild Rift. So Riot Games used pre-registration ahead of the Wild Rift launch, generating over 40 million pre-registrations globally ahead of, their, ahead of their global launch. This helped Riot Games make critical business decisions in improving their game before it went live. For example, they looked at markets with high pre-registration rates and allowed them to better plan their infrastructure and server capacity needed at launch. Another example is Nexon with their game Faith. They also use pre-registration to great effect. And what they actually saw was a 70% higher ARP DAO for pre-registrants and also a 50% higher day 60 retention amongst those that had pre-registered. So they use it as a signal to kind of determine you know, who their most engaged users would be. And they noticed this very strong correlation between pre-registering and then becoming a value, you know, high value user for them. So today, pre-registration has become a critical step for Nexon releasing a new game on mobile. So to recap, these are the five major steps that we recommend to ensure that your next mobile game reaches its maximum potential on the store. So that starts with internal testing, then goes to closed beta, open beta, soft launch, pre-registration, and then when you're ready, then global launch. And over the past 10 years, we've built some truly extensive tools right into the Play Console to help you achieve success on Play through each of these five steps. So that wraps up our content today. And I'd like again to plug this website, which Moon had also mentioned in his presentation about policy updates. Uh, there are many more great resources for how to succeed on Google Play available at Play Academy. So Play Academy is our self-paced learning platform with courses and videos built by experts at Google to help apps and game businesses succeed on Google Play. So you can find many of the topics we covered here today and more on Play Academy. Definitely bookmark this URL and check it out later when you have time. So I think that wraps up our presentation for today. I think we'll move into the final section, which is Q&A uh, before we close. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan and Moon. That was really fantastic. Thank you for the comprehensive overview. Um, that was that was that was great. So yeah, we now have an opportunity uh, for the audience to ask some questions. So um, if you do have any questions, like I said before, please use the Q and A function at the bottom here of the Google. It's making part of the Zoom app, and um, I'll relay them back to Dan and Moon. So we do have a question here. Let me just have a look. Um, oh, an ominous attendee saying, I have no questions, a very thorough webinar. Well, there you go. Um, you know, you've, you've done an excellent job. Pretty much uh, seemingly covered it all. Um, that, ah, okay. So there is a question here from another anonymous attendee who's asking, are there any differences to trust and safety in the APEC region that we should know about? Um... Not for as of now, but it's, it's a really good point that um, we don't necessarily have uh, these policy updates that uh, suits the entire global uh, uh, developers and markets, right? So there are certain policies that impact every single apps and developers are in store, but there are certain policies at the same time that only impact certain markets. So for example, um, um, you know, there are a lot of government, different government regulations um, per, per each different region. So to cope with that, um, we might have different um, set of guidelines for uh, each uh, countries. And, and even, even within the same country, there might be different sort of uh, guidelines and policy enforcement uh, structures. So please stay tuned on any of those uh, updates. Um, and just to give you a hint, uh, there might be some, uh, there could be some uh, updates on our 
policies that's going to impact some of the markets in uh, APAC in, in, in about two, three months' time. Um, so so stay, stay tuned. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to impact Australia specifically. But uh, it may if you're uh, going out global and if you're already uh, servicing your uh, titles in other markets, yes, please stay tuned uh, to any of these updates. Okay, great. Thank you. We do have a follow-up question on that one. Namely, have you ever had to alert gaming developers in particular if they breach Google's trust and safety terms? Does that happen often? Yeah, of course. Um, um, we, Whenever we find a violation, we, as I said, we try to uh, send a warning first. Or if we find a violation in a, a new submission, Normally, we would reject uh, that submission first, and then we, we ask the developers to fix the violation. But in certain cases, for example, um, if even if we send a warning, developer doesn't fix it, yes, um, we would have to then, you know, really enforce and remove the app from the store. Uh, and then developer may um, fix the violation and then get their app uh, back reinstated and back to the store. That's one, could be one scenario. And another scenario could be if we find really egregious violations as the ones that I depicted during the webinar was, for example, ad fraud, right? Like tall fraud, those type of malwares. We would then even um, uh, not even send out warnings on those egregious violations because it's really user harming and um, it's basically malicious in our ecosystem, right? We want them to be out of the ecosystem. So we would normally suspend those apps and games uh, immediately. And even we can even like ban those developer accounts. So yeah, of course, um, we do have game developers that get suspended um, and also get their game suspended and also even their accounts banned uh, because of these egregious violations. Well, and enough. yeah, it, it happens really often. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, um, well, thank you for looking after us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so yeah, so it's a, uh, it, this policy could impact your business. I would say like like directly. So, so please stay tuned and with the, the any updates, uh, notifications, and all any updates they were making. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for elaborating on that. We do have a very interesting question here from Carrie. And Carrie is asking, which Southeast Asian mobile markets do you feel are underutilized by Australian developers? Then you want to take this? Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a great question. I think, you know, what we've seen in the past few years is tremendous growth within uh, Indonesia and also Vietnam. Uh, you know, these are countries that are high population uh, but also a young population and also mm -hmm. internet connected, which is, you know, something that we're really excited about to see the growth in. Um, so definitely when Australian developers think about bringing their games to different markets, they, I've seen that they do tend to focus on, you know, kind of more Western markets, like, you know, again, North America, Europe, things like that, which have similar kind of English speaking uh, culture. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think you can't ignore, you know, the, Indonesia being the fourth most, most populous country in the world with such a young emerging population of gamers who are hungry to play, you know, quality titles uh, and then also kind of spend money as well. So definitely recommend looking at Indonesia and Vietnam as potential growth markets uh, for your games. Yeah, thank you for, for, um, uh, for your answer there, Dan. And, you know, I think you brought up some very pertinent points in the fact that Australian developers at uh, this stage are still mostly aiming for North America and Europe in the cultural alignment uh, as well as language alignment. However, we do have some opportunities right on our doorstep here, so it'd be really worth um, looking into um, exploring that further. I mean, is there anything that Google can do to, to help with that, you know, in terms of supplying some market intelligence on, on the size of the market, on taste, monetization, that kind of thing, given that each region in Asia sort of has its own idiosyncrasies, right? Different tastes, mm -hmm. different preferences, different monetization um you know all 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 that um you know all of these challenges is, is there anything that you can do to assist um australian developers with with market entry and, and gathering that intelligence yeah i mean in the past we've run different kind of webinars from google play focused on what we say like go global is what we call it 
Uh, in those kind of webinars, we would bring in kind of a local market expert, usually like one of my teammates, let's say from like Japan or Korea to speak about the opportunity in their local market. Uh, we did one for Southeast Asia previously as well to kind of explain the, the opportunity in this region. So I think definitely like we would love to invite more Australia and New Zealand developers to join these webinars and really learn about the opportunity. Um, so yeah, I think as it'd be a great next step for us to kind of extend those invitations to the IGM members. Uh, for the next time we run one of these webinars. Yeah, please do, because I think there are some really fantastic opportunities. And I think often it really is a matter of education, right? You know, you know that there is potential, but how do you tap into this? You know, right. how do you, is, is my my game aligned with the taste of the market? What do I need to do in terms of culturalization, monetization, and all of those things? So any insights in that respect would be greatly appreciated. So yeah, please keep us in mind in that respect. Um, we, we do have some more questions here. Um, there's one, is there cross-platform support for Apple? Uh, not at the time, not at this moment in time, I should say. So what we are doing is focusing on expanding uh, our multi-platform offering to PC users, just because we saw that, um, you know, originally Google Play Games on PC started off as an opportunity for mobile developers to bring their game to PC market. Uh, we know there's over a billion PCs and, you know, a billion users in that segment as well. Uh, so that's kind of where we started with our multi-platform journey. So we want Google Play to be, you know, the best get destination for all types of games, not just mobile games. That's kind of our aspiration, which is why, um, you know, we are looking at this PC opportunity very seriously and then also now expanding support for native PC games. Uh, for future expansion, I think anything is possible, but for right now, we're focused on PC. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, spicy question, too, for the cognizant of that. So, um, and it was asked by an anomalous attendee. So, you know, um, I don't know what they're hiding. Uh, but we do have another question here with regards to uh, trust and safety. Namely, do you provide guidance slash assistance on how developers can uplift trust and safety issues? Um, yeah, um, I can give you, like, I would say a few tips is first, um, please stay tuned. That's very basic, but um, effective uh, way of uh, getting all these uh, issues ahead of time. And, um, and yeah, get, get, the, get the notifications and read them. Um, and also, you know, stay tuned with all these other ways of methods of um, our notifications like policy bytes and webinars that I talked about. Um, in that way, you can easily sort out uh, what are the policies that will impact you or not, right? So that's number one. And second, um, stay tuned also with our enforcement notification. So whenever there's a warning, uh, you will get an email uh, and also uh, a console inbox message and also even banner um, banner message. So we, we tried our best to uh, uplift the, the visibility of uh, all these ongoing warnings to prevent your apps and games being taken away, taken down uh, from the store. So that's number two. Uh, number three, and just please utilize the appeals channel as much as possible so that, um, for example, you can even extend the warning uh, through uh, appeals uh, flow, and also you can get clarity. Uh, I know sometimes they just, you know, give you very generic uh, answers, but still they, they, they can point you the right uh, area, uh, right? So, so please do utilize those available channels uh, and stay ahead of all, all these issues before app gets like taken down because taking it back up takes a lot longer and harder effort uh, for you. So to stay, stay up front of, ahead of the issues and, um, and be more proactive, basically. Yeah, no, 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 fair so, enough. That that yeah. all makes sense. Read your email, make sure that you know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't don't just ignore it. That's uh, that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, all right. So it seems that we've answered all the questions. Unless there is anyone else who is uh, who does have any um, further questions. So here's one more opportunity to ask something. Anything else comes to mind? Upcoming uh, changes in Brazil. Can you explain uh, an upcoming changes in Brazil? Would they is this related the, 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 to the natural it? question to ask in an Australian webinar? What's happening in Brazil? Oh, I think this is probably related to that we're going to be launching play points in Brazil um, sometime this year. So yeah, it's just an expansion of our uh, loyalty program, essentially. Unless there was something else uh, that you had in mind, but 
yeah and, and sorry I, I didn't want to dim, d diminish the question so if it's <laughs> um you know if, if you want to it's the play point state okay. yeah there you yeah. go mm -hmm. okay excellent all right sorry so you know we we of course are taking this question seriously um all right any any further questions here's one more opportunity we're sort of coming to the natural end of the webinar but you know i'm sure we can squeeze one or two more question questions into this Look, if that's not the case, um, then I would, I would really like to thank you for your time and, you know, for your um, expert explanation of the various topics that pertain to the Google Play Store. I've really, really enjoyed this. I certainly learned a lot. And uh, please keep us in the loop for further webinars. You know, I think in particular with regards to the opportunities in Asia, that is something um, we would really like to explore further. And I think it's also um, safe to say that that is something that's on the radar of Australian developers. So uh, as rightfully pointed out, one of the most populous countries on the planet is right on our doorstep. So, you know, if there's an opportunity to um, learn more about market entry there, we would certainly appreciate it. But um, look, that said, again, thank you so much for, for the comprehensive overview. Um, the very fact that the first question was, I don't have any question, that was it was very thorough. I think just speaks to, you know, your ability to uh, accommodate a whole bunch of really relevant and um, interesting information within this time frame. So thank you so much for making yourself available, and um, you know, I, I hope to see you at GCap. Yes, for sure. Thank you very much, everyone. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone, for dialing in, um, and uh, have a good night. See you later. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.